Another thing that I have to uh, explain, if you're going to build an official power supply like this, I would suggest that you put a switch to discharge the capacitor after you're done using it. Either that or have a, uh, a high resistance, like maybe, I don't know, 12K, 1, 1K, I'm not sure. You have it constantly on here as a bleeder resistor so that it'll always bleed a certain amount, but in that case you might end up sucking more power out of the, the line than you want to when the thing is on. So it's better off you'd have a switch. In this case I'm using a 120 ohm power resistor to short out the leads on the capacitor so that when I pick it up it doesn't zap me. A capacitor like this could probably vaporize the tip of a screwdriver if you dead short it. So that's why I'm not going to use just a wire to short it out. So the great thing about this circuit is that there's no heat wasted. You're limiting current without taking that current and turning it into heat which is wasted power. In addition you're getting more power on the other end. And let me show you what I mean. Right here is a 100 watt light bulb. Again, don't pay attention to the red and the white color wires. They have nothing to do with polarity. They're just scrap wires that I'm using to demonstrate this. Simply, in this case, I'm just replacing the capacitor in this circuit with a resistor. A light bulb is a resistor. And I'll show you the difference. Now the, the maximum current that could end up over here is 1 amp because 110 volts divided by 100 watts is essentially 1 amp because the bulb is 100 watts. So you can see how much it's really barely putting out any gas because the light bulb itself is eating up about 90% of that current. So that little bitty amount of gas is all you get by burning up all this wattage in that light bulb. Now it does make the device safer as far as it's safer than plugging it directly into your house. But um, it's horrible compared to the capacitor because the capacitor has the same safety function and it passes 70% more current, probably more than that. Rough estimation. So here it is again. I'm going to show you again how the capacitor is so much better than a resistor or a transformer. Even a transformer, if you wanted to isolate the cell from the, uh, from the house current, which is useful because the transformer would magnetically limit the current, but the problem with that is you're going to burn up a lot of heat in, the, in that thing because the wire has a resistance and <clears throat> the voltage sees the resistance and it has to overcome it and in the process it it creates um, excess heat and that's energy lost and that's one of the major problems I was having in some of my low voltage cells I was losing a shitload of energy in the form of heat the wires would get hot everything would start burning and melting and no one really needs that I mean that's not that's not good so I uh, stumbled upon this information and uh, it works really well. The thing that's great about series cells is that you can use lots of voltage in them by having a lot of plates because each cell divides the voltage in half. So let's say in this case we have seven plates, right? You have 110 volts going across essentially what amounts to seven resistors and what happens when you have resistors in series each resistor has a 
a fraction of the voltage across it. So in effect, you have 110 across this whole seven plate array, which is actually six cells. That amounts to 110 volts divided by six. The whole cell array has 110 volts across it, but each chamber only has 100 divided by 6, which is like maybe 18 volts. Each, each, uh, each cell has about 18 something volts across it. And that is the beauty of the series cell. Just going to power this up one more time. If you're going to do this, try not to shock yourself with the current because uh, it's not fun, obviously. See, I turned it off. You can see how much water it actually displaces just by having the gas come out into the water. See it rising? That's an indication of how much gas is actually being put out here. And uh, one of the really amazing things about this is that these wires don't get hot. I shit you not, these wires do not even get warm. The water doesn't get warm, the cell doesn't get warm, the capacitor doesn't get warm, not even the, the main lines going into the capacitor get warm. Nothing heats up. Whereas with the light bulb, after a few minutes, those wires start, the wires start getting warm the water heats up and uh, it's very strange why it doesn't happen with the capacitor instead. Uh, this will only work with an AC system. This doesn't work with direct current. You gotta have alternating current going into a capacitor in order for it to pass current. It'll only pass a current rise or a current fall. Much in the way a transformer works but different.